Where do prices stand? How much do you have in terms of the ability to raise prices? So by principle, we are, do not want to be the most expensive in the market, no matter how high our facilities are. Mm. We want to make it as re reasonable as possible, mm. keeping in mind that as many people can who can access this kind of treatment mm. should benefit. Mm. It should not be for the elite. Mm. So there is, so we, if you look at our mix, we have all people, the highest people you can talk about in your, you know, hierarchy. I don't consider them high or low. But I'm saying that at all economic strata, all educational strata, government, all that stuff, we are agnostic. We want to give the same treatment to everybody because human life is the same, no matter what, where you come from. So we try to keep it as affordable, keeping in mind that you need a certain margin to be able to, one, renew yourself, which is very important because technology is the backbone and technology gets obsolete within seven years. This whole 20, 25 crore machines, mm. the company says it's end of life. Mm. I mean, these are bizarre things that, that have happened, but we are in the clutches of international uh, manufacturers. Of course, with this Atman Nirbhar, things are improving. Mm. We will, in times to come, produce our own MRIs and mm. uh, high-end scans and stuff like that, which we don't today. Mm. So we are totally dependent on these companies from around. And they can dictate, they said after 10 years, although the, the machine can be extended to longer, much longer, maybe 15 years, 20 years, some of the machines. But they refuse to give parts. They say, well, now we don't manufacture parts anymore. Mm. So you have no choice. Mm. So I'm saying that you have to keep it in mind that the pricing has to give enough that you can renew yourself, mm. you can pay back your debts, mm. and also leave enough margin for growth. So give, putting this together, I think that around 20 to 25 percent is the ideal margin which you should have yes. in healthcare because it's like I always say it's a it's it's not a business it's a business with a soul yeah. it doesn't have it's not cold blooded in any way it should never be so for us medicine first because I have said it many times that good medicine will give you good returns but good good business will not give you. Mm. So that's that's the whole. So will the margins probably sustain at 20%? You've done 20% in the previous quarter. Is yeah, that, we're doing 20, is that 20, the target? No, I mean, you're... if it goes up 2, 3, 4%, which is not bad, which is good. It only gives us enough elbow room to create more. But you don't want to cut corners. Mm. You never want to compromise the quality of treatment. You do not, and like, you, like I said, you don't want to deny people. Because, you know, people who are already on the sidelines, mm. okay, they deserve medicine as much as anybody does. So you try to make it possible in whatever way, how. Now you see, the government has also taken that view with Ayushman coming in. There is a the relief. There's a safety net for 50 crore people. And now the government is also talking about increasing that net and which how it should be. People who can afford should buy private insurance. Mm. People who can't afford should be given this kind of safety net, which the government has done. So has healthcare changed uh, post COVID-19 because there's more awareness? People are walking into the hospitals more simply because there is more insurance penetration, which has taken place as well. And like you mentioned, there is some amount of cap catch up in terms of infrastructure. So, you know, Psych Are we in a psychologically, new phase, right? psychologically, if you look at it, it became very clear to people that people who had comorbidities mm. and got COVID, especially in the Delta wave, mm. they were the ones who were really vulnerable to losing their life. Mm. The healthier ones, no matter what their age was, mm. they were the ones who survived the best. So what does that do? It shakes you up to mm. say, okay, one, I want to invest in health. The other, I want to invest in my protection. Mm. So that is why the more and more people will seek that. Mm. And so that's a very good thing to say that if we have healthier India, mm. I mean, we will be no question on top of the world. Mm. Because of the fact, simple fact, that we are more suited mm. than any other country, like I told you before, to be able to offer these services. Mm. I believe, and this is my belief, you agree or don't agree, 
that God gave us the best brains in the world. Mm. Indians do have the best brains. Mm. But we don't have that discipline yet. Mm. Mm. If we can combine the two, why do Indians perform beyond anybody in the, when they go overseas? Mm. Because they have the brains, they have the intelligence, we have the innovative spirit in, uh, you know, like we call Jugaad. Mm. We can do many of those things because we, this is survival in India. Mm. Now the next thing is, that the environment there is so well organized mm. that there are the systems are so robust that people function very nicely in there. Now that's, that's Medanta, mm. that we have created those protocols, those mm. systems because we don't have visiting doctors. Mm. We have full-time doctors. Mm -hmm. Everybody is here, mm. they have staked their profession, their life, everything in one place. Mm. So that's the difference between having a thousand visiting people who will fill up the beds, but then the standard will not be there and there is no, no sense of belonging. Yeah. So if you have a sense of belonging, as you go forward, yeah. you will see more and more people will come into the loop and actually want to stay and stake their whole career here. Dr. Srihan, you are now a listed company. So let me ask you, what might your two to three year vision be? So look, we have reached, and that's why we did the IPO, mm -hmm. is to we have reached a stage in the life of this company mm -hmm. where it has been well recognized mm -hmm. that the standard that we created, because when, when I, we first started this, people wondered whether this kind of hospital will even work. Mm -hmm. But it speaks for itself because from here we have created five other hospitals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have reached a stage in our life where we can actually take the standard which are now very robust, the protocols are all set mm -hmm. that we can do it much more, uh, I, I say, rapidly than we would have otherwise if we just did organic, organic, organic. Mm -hmm. So that way it is, it gives you that flexibility, one, to serve more and more people, mm -hmm. right? And also investors got their exit, which is also the second most important thing that everybody should feel that they have, we have recognized their participation and they can actually, uh, uh, you know, go on to the next because that's what the financial institutions do. So that's the freedom to everybody. Uh, I didn't sell, we don't want to sell. We just want to keep. Would you look to probably sell some stake later? No, I have, I have a belief that we should, we've got a very good thing going. We should build on it, build on it, build on it. And my, I'm a doctor, so my satisfaction doesn't come from money. <laughs> Truly. It comes from quality of health care. No, I'm also sure. our patients. Mm -hmm. You know, you will not believe that your blessings, mm -hmm. your success, mm -hmm. everything comes from three simple facts. Mm -hmm. One, when a patient comes to you, he should have the confidence that you're going to give him the best treatment available in the world that he deserves, mm. right? Mm. That you have the knowledge to do it mm. and you will sincerely do it. Uh, preventive healthcare, that seems to be a big emerging uh, segment. Is that the case? Um, okay, so very good question because mm. we became doctors to treat disease. Mm. Then we said we are smarter than that. Mm. Why not early detection so they don't get so sick and their outcomes will be better. Then we said, why let people get sick? Mm -hmm. Then with the soul wellness, preventive started. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now we have gone beyond that. Mm -hmm. Now we are saying predictive health. Medanta is leading the way in that, by the way. Mm -hmm. That we are saying now there is enough knowledge, enough technology, mm -hmm. enough algorithm that we can create today with the help of knowledge and, and technology mm -hmm. to predict to a great degree on some of the diseases like like uh, heart disease, mm. like uh, diabetes, mm. even some cancers. Mm. So uh, when a per person comes to you mm. with say a history, a family history of heart disease, mm. now should he live in fear all his life? Mm. What are the things we write because from our, mm. from our wellness program, from our preventive, uh, but we go beyond that. Mm. You can see, predict with their genetic makeup, mm. their biomolecular makeup now, mm. to say what are your chances. 
so you can be much more precise than you were before. Diabetes, you know, you can prevent diabetes because we, we have the knowledge today to say, yes, these are the parameters you need to look at. This is the algorithm for an individual. So what you're saying is, is personalized medicine. And in that medicine, you can say, look, you have absolutely 25% chance of developing diabetes if you're not careful from today onwards. Now that person stays warned. Mm -hmm. If I tell the whole world, don't eat sugar, don't eat this, you may get diabetes, nobody's going to listen. And that's what's happening. You think that after all, we have gone blue in the face talking about what are the bad parts about fat, what about meats, what about this, what about that, junk food. Mm -hmm. You look at, the, look at the success of junk food companies. Mm -hmm. it's, only, it's going through the roof. All right, Dr. Trihan, it's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you very much for joining Thank you, in Thank and you. Enjoy uh, taking my time. some time. Thank you.